What's up, guys? You're welcome to Emma Crown TV, where we publish news on politics, entertainment, celebrities, and metro stories. We have another trending news for you today, and the headline here reads Arewa Forum shakes after IPOP disgraced Junaid and Abdullahi over attack on Namdi Kanu. All right, before I proceed with today's news, please, if this is the first time you are watching any of our videos on our channel, there is a red subscribe button below this video now. Just go ahead, hit that red subscribe button, click the bell icon beside it to remain updated whenever we publish news like this without you ever missing any news again. All right, now the news in details. The indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, on Thursday described Junaid Mohammed, Second Republic lawmaker, as a glorified Almajiri. Almajiri is a system of Islamic education practiced in northern Nigeria. Almajiri is derived from an Arabic word rendered Al Majurin, in English transliteration meaning a person who leaves his home in search of Islamic knowledge. IPOP said both Mohammed and a prominent northern elder, Angu Abdullahi, have nothing to offer apart from allegedly threatening people and promoting Fulani cattle hegemony across Nigeria. The separatist group was reacting to Mohammed's recent comment that its leader, Namdi Kanu, should go to hell and burn to ashes. Mohammed lambasted Kanu for demanding that his security must be guaranteed for him to return to Nigeria and continue his trial. However, a statement by IPAW spokesperson Emma Powerful maintained that Mohammed was clueless about the agitation for Biafra. The statement reads, Junaid Mohammed and Ango Abdullahi have repeatedly touted themselves as the henchmen of the caliphate and in their delusion have made the mistake of equating IPOP agitation for freedom to anything they have seen before. How misguided they are. Recent decisive diplomatic advances recorded by our leader have taken the corrupt North by surprise, and they have in turn been reduced to babbling like a bunch of disgruntled drunkard kicked out of a bar for unruly behavior. Every other day we read about Angu Abdullahi or Junaid Mohammed on the pages of newspaper, mounting their unusual Arewa is mantra rubbish before because of the okay, because the British adopted them as their favorite house slaves. They never grant live interview nor have they allowed any meaningful cross examination of their twisted views. This unity begging parasite from the caliphate must understand that they are not in the same league as our leader Mazinam de Kano and will never be. They are nothing but glorified al Majuri with nothing to offer apart from threatening people and promoting Fulani cattle hegemony in a mentally backward society like Nigeria. Junaid Mohammed is roundly uninformed and clueless about the fact and reason behind the resurgent IPOP led agitation for Biafra because they are a product of a failed British experiment and, in their own right, the architect of a reign of Fulani feudal mediocrity in Nigeria. Our leader never asked anybody to campaign for his return to bury his mother. Why this? busy bodies will be poking their nose into a matter that does not concern him is beyond understanding at the meeting at the mere mention of the name namdi kano the entire fulani caliphate and their supporters go into convulsion at least there is now an open acknowledgement within the political circles in the north that namdi kano will succeed in not only freeing biafra but will break nigeria into pieces Biafra is coming and there is nothing the core Arewa North can do about it. It's important Junaid Mohammed and Co. know that our leader Mazin Namdekanu is yet to make his intention public regarding his proposed visit to Biafra land. If and when that happens, they should be rest assured that no permission will be sought from Asorok Fulani Kabal that rule Nigeria or anybody else for that matter. Our leader cannot ask a fatherland Sudanese for permission to visit the land of his forefathers. Had he had any planning of visiting Kotom, then 
the need may arise but not on this occasion all right guys this is um um ipop actually dropping a bombshell on uh junaid muhammad and abdullahi uh, of course um if you actually study what has been going on you discover that there was a time nam the kind of, you know rhetorically because i know that was a rhetorical question nam the kind of said that he is willing to come back to nigeria to continue his trial if only the court you get me can actually guarantee his safety so and i think on this they they they, they judge the judge that handled Nam Dekano's case said the only safest place for Nam Dekano was prison. That's what the judge said. She said the only safest place for Nam Dekano was prison and that even judges themselves are not even secured. That judges have been kidnapped, have been abducted. So the only safest place for Nam Dekano if he returns is prison. And to which Nam Dekano replied very cleverly. And you know what Nam Dekano said? Nam Dekano said, okay. If you are not safe, you get me? Why not to just move over to prison, you and your family, so that you will be safe over there? And it was, it was so funny. It was such a funny reply that nobody saw it actually coming. Okay. So, but after that, we now saw Junaid Muhammad. A lot of you know him. He is a very, um, he is one of the uh, uh, outspoken person. You get me? Not for the um, for the Arewa Consultative Forum. So he speaks for the for the forum. So he came out and said that Nam Dekano should go to hell and born. That's what he said. Nam Dekano should go to hell and born. So, but when Nam Dekano made this um um exact question, I think a lot of people knew that this was going to be a, is a rhetorical question that Nam Dekano was, was joking about it that he wasn't going to come because I myself for once I know that there is no way Nam Dekano will come will either if he comes you understand me to be under a covert operation nobody might know okay but he's not going to come openly if he comes they are going to arrest him and he will rot in jail look at look at this guy uh, uh, Shiwore even upon the fact that Shiwore have met bail condition just of recent he has met bail condition you get, but DSS have not still re re released him. Okay, what about Dazuki? Dazuki have been there for more than four years now, and he said there. So what we are saying is that the judge answering Nam Dekano that the safest place for you is prison means that if Nam Dekano come, in fact, they are not going to continue the trial again. They will just dump him there in prison to rot. So that is it. So what do you guys think? Um, I pop have described. Junaid Mohammed as a glorified Amajiri. A lot of you know what, what Amajiri is. Amajiri is somebody who leaves his home in search of Islamic knowledge. And this Amajiri, you understand me, they have a close uh, related group like them. And that is Boko Haram. Boko Haram said Western education is sin. And we all know that these Amajiris, you understand me, they are the one breeding Boko Haram. Because in this uh, um, Islamic study, if you want to do, okay, let me not dive into it because that is more uh, religious. I don't want to go into it, but what I'm saying is that some of these uh, fanatical uh, Islamists, you understand me, they have this fanatical view that whenever they die, you get on the course of promoting Islam, you get that they are going to paradise. So this is this, this, is this Islamic, this ecstatic uh, view, you get, that is fueling what we call this Boko Haram. So these guys are willing to die. They know that if they die, they are going to paradise. And if they go to paradise, they believe that that they have 70 virgins that's going to attain to them, that every day, this 70 virgin, even though you sleep with them, they, their virginity is renewed every day. I've, I've never heard anything as absurd like that in my life before. I've never heard somebody sleep with somebody and then all of a sudden, you wake up the next day, you are still a virgin. It's just too absurd and ridiculous. So, all right, let's do that one aside. So, that is what IPOP have replied. Um, Junaid Mohammed and Ango Abdullahi. Of course, you guys know that for some time now, IPOP have been in the international stage. IPOP have been in the international stage to the consternation of you know, of the North and the Nigerian government. So, 
the Nigerian government are not really um, very happy. According to Nam Vikano, he even said in one of those days he was having a speech at the European Parliament that the Nigerian government sent a spy. They sent their own diplomat to observe what was going on in the European Parliament. And Nam Vikano came close to close with them. He saw them, he greeted them and, and left. So guys, a lot of things is happening. And um, a recent, I think I saw a news that the British Commission is sending, you know, Sammy is sending one of the advocates to come and find out about um, about what has been this the clash between headsmen and and um, and the farmers. They want to find out the death toll. Okay, they want to find find out what has this clash resulted in because a lot of a lot of some of these facts are actually hidden and are not let known. A lot of people have died, but this information had not been, you know, have not been given their right figures. Okay, a lot of um, how did they call it? Is that they call the homicide? You get have actually been committed, but it's being covered or people have been mass grave are being discovered and nobody is talking about that so that uh, the international community can properly you get actually speak out on this so what do you guys think about this i want to drop your comment below let me know what you think about this is welcome tv before you leave make sure you share this video to your friends on facebook twitter and also instagram this is welcome tv on behalf of myself and my team god bless you